hi. So I wanted you to know, I pulled a couple cards to see if I should do a reading for you before I continue with my um, memoir. And I got memory, self-interest, and influence. So basically my um, spirit team is telling me that these memories are helping me and helping to influence some other situations that they're working on. So I'm going to go ahead. Um, <clears throat> so I was talking about um, my middle daughter's father. I was best friends with him in eighth grade and we ran back into each other when I came back to um, Midland after California. And we had a great time hanging out and whatever. And um, uh, what happened? That was short lived, a couple weeks. And then um, it stopped and then a whole bunch of other stuff happened. Then I ran into him again, okay? And this was right after my divorce um, from my son, my son's dad, who is still in prison. So um, anyways, I, um, he got me pregnant, I think the first time we, we, um, were together and, um, that started that whole thing. And we were together for seven years, I think, all together, maybe not five years. I don't know. I, I don't keep track of time or dates and stuff like that. I think it's a waste of time. But anyways, um, we were together for a, a, too long. Okay. Um, he was a recovered, recovering alcoholic when we got together. He started drinking after my daughter was born, I think. And he was a mean drunk. Um, and this is when I first realized that there were demons that could invade people's bodies. Because um, he would get drunk and he would say things to me I'd never told him. Stuff like that. To try to hurt me, which was weird. It was just like, wait, I never told you that. Because I, I remember weird stuff. And I quit telling people that stuff because I'd had it brought against me before. So it was a thing I didn't tell people. Because I was still recovering from it. So anyway, that's when I realized there were demons. He um, tackled me one night. And strangled me. It's so weird, like, how I know, like, there's forces because I've been punched in the face so many times. And when when I get a punch to my face, it, like, glances off. I've never had my face bruised. Ever. You know how many times I've been punched in my face? And hard. Stars. You know, hard. Um, But it never, it never, like left any marks it's just so weird it, it just seemed like it deflected it never even was that hard I shouldn't say that it they were coming at me as hard as they could though that's what I'll say but it deflected somehow it's like I had an energy field um another reason I didn't have much fear of anything or anyone and I've never been a fighter but I will speak my mind and I'll take blows if I have to <laughs> But I'll keep talking. I'll keep telling you. I'll, you know, like, I'll be like, oh, you feel like a man now? <laughs> Does that make you feel like a man? Stupid stuff like that. But, um, so, I told him after a while, I tried really hard to get him to quit. And it was like two years of ultimatums and da-da-da, you know. And finally, I, I mean, I, I actually had been telling him to physically leave my house for like six months but it was really hard because we were married I'd ended up married him it was my house but and I he was a stay-at-home dad like he literally quit working when he got together with me he refused to get a job I I told him you have like till the end of the year to have a job like he would not get a job he would not move out He's like, I'm married and I'm not going, we're married and I'm not going anywhere. I want to work on this. And it's like, well, I want to work on not getting punched in the face anymore. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, um, I told him, okay, fine. If you don't want to move out, like move into your daughter's room with her, like get out of my room. I can't have you in my, I need my space. Right. And so I, uh, tried that and it like literally, he just wouldn't get out of my space. So 
I called up a friend of mine and I was just like, I, I've asked everyone too. Like I had my brother had come and threatened them, like everything. Like I couldn't get rid of them. And, um, and I didn't have money for a divorce. So there was that, but, um, it took too long anyway. I needed it now. Like I was getting my ass beat and I tried to get a protection order from the police, um, based on, cause I'd never made a police report. I always handle my own situations cause honestly, the police have never helped me. Well, they have, they've helped me on three occasions, but I've had a lot of experience with them and it's always been almost always been terrible and so I don't call them I've been traumatized by police but when I needed an order of protection to get him out of my house and quit getting beat I did go to the courthouse and I wrote this like three page summary of all the abuse I was going through and said that I needed an order of protection and that got denied based on the fact that I didn't have any proof so there, there was that. Um, so then I told him, I said, you know, you, I am going to start dating. I'm done with you. I, I want to like go have some fun. Actually, a friend of mine was just, I told her, I said, I'm done with him. I'm going to start dating. Like maybe he'll move out if I'm like dating somebody, you know what I mean? And so my friend was like, yeah, but I got somebody. It was weird how it clicked. It was just like that night and bam. My husband called me all night, um, over and over, saying he was in texting and saying he was going to kill himself. And then his ex-wife started texting me and calling me, telling me she's worried about him. Call her and go home and this and that. And I was just like, I turned my phone off. When I got home the next day, um, he was laying in a pool of blood on the, uh, garage floor. And I'm like, what the hell, you know? And I run inside. I'm like trying to figure out what the flip happened. He's he's still conscious, um, but he's really messed up on pills. And I'm like, what the hell? I run into the bedroom. And at the time, I had a severe back injury. Okay, I've herniated discs in my back several times. As a physical therapist, I did it. Um, I did it once when I was younger. And yeah, it just, I, I don't have that problem really much anymore, but... I mean, I don't herniate discs anymore. I know how to, my core is stronger probably. But anyways, <laughs> um, the moral of the story was at the time I had a prescription for Neurontin, which is um, gabapentin. It's a nerve blocker kind of thing. Um, and a three, did I say three month prescription? And a three month prescription for uh, Wellbutrin, which is an antidepressant. And they were both empty. And I just filled them. I was a little upset because it's real hard going through withdrawals from um, antidepressants, by the way. And the hospital wouldn't help me when I tried to get some more. <laughs> but whatever. I dealt with it. That's why I don't do antidepressants or anything from doctors. Because if something happens, they don't give a fuck. They don't. You're done. You're laying in the streets dying. They don't give a shit. We already gave you that prescription. So anyways, he ended up in a coma, brain dead, in the hospital. He was in there for a week. And um, I had made an appointment with the transplant team to uh, come and to donate his organs. It was 8 o'clock in the morning, and... We were in the room. I'd asked his mom to make the decision to turn off the machines, but she wouldn't. Because him and I were not emotionally connected at that time. I really didn't like him at all, actually. So, um, so anyways, I, I went ahead. You know, I was like, well, I don't want his organs to go bad, him laying here for three months. You know, we might as well make some use of it. I'm a practical person, okay? Don't take it personally. And so, um, I was going to, they were explaining the paperwork that I was signing right there, like right over his bed and he heard it and he goes, huh? Huh? And he woke up. So, um, they tried to get me to bring him home with me and shit and I wasn't having it. 
Mm -mm. No more. And so he ended up, um, I'm going to end that story there. He ended up going and doing other stuff in his life. And I was finally rid of him, <laughs> which was fantastic. But of course, since I didn't like myself, I um, fell right into another relationship with my youngest dad. And um, that went terribly. He didn't abuse, he wasn't like physically abusive, but he drank and he um, was verbally abusive. So I ended that. And then I hooked up with my twin flame. And then you heard the story from there. I guess that's pretty much it. I don't know. Anything else you guys want me to tell them? You want me to tell them that story? All right. So there was this one time, um, my friend Mark had this guy Hobie living at his house. And um, Mark and, and Hobie used to get in these terrible fights, like cinder blocks and stuff, just bloody each other up. And it used to drive me nuts because I'm a, I'm a peace loving hippie. So, uh, they got in another one of these fights. Oh, Hobie was living there, and I was like, get your shit, put it in my car, where are you going? You're leaving. Like, you can't be here. So I took him up, um, north. Uh, to, I was taking him up to Petoskey, actually. We were already there, weren't we? Or close to Petoskey, somewhere around there, but... In Petoskey, I got pulled over. Um... Well, I wasn't driving. My boyfriend at the time was driving. That is a whole other story, but, you know, another... He's dead now. He got his, but prison, then death. As soon as he got out of prison. But anyways, um, he was driving, but he didn't have a license. And he had a bad record. And we're getting pulled over. Hobie's got a bag of weed in the trunk with all of his stuff. The trunk's tied down. That's why we got pulled over. <clears throat> so, um, so they search the car and they find his weed and they're asking everybody whose it is and no one will claim it, including the person whose it was in the back seat, whose stuff it was all in. Like, who else's would it be, right? But, um, I'm the one that ended up going to jail for that that night because, um, no one would claim it, and I wasn't going to lie. I don't lie. And then they found a roach under the passenger seat of my car. And they were like, well, what's this then? If, you know, and I was like, I smoke weed. You know, I don't know if that's mine. I just got this car. It's used. I don't know. I really don't. But I do smoke weed. And so they um, gave me a ticket for uh, marijuana use. And I spent 11 days in jail for that. Lost two jobs. Um, lost my boyfriend. He was, luckily, lost him at the same time. Um, never saw him again. Um, but that was not fair. To me, at all. So, maybe that's why they wanted me to tell you tell you that um let me grab some cards I don't know what else to talk about I feel like this is a guided thing though I'm supposed to be influencing some kind of investigation so that's what we're gonna do to bring balance to a situation Let's get some tarot. Should I stop this and start over again? No, it's only 14.
you know what's so funny is how we're like the collective conscious you know what i mean and so it, it i feel like especially especially now i mean i'm talking to space command i'm talking to um the collective i'm talking to my dm you know i i literally i could talk to anyone i wanted to but i block most out but it's just kind of funny how you can it's like I can like ask you guys questions in, in real time, even though you don't see this till later and you can answer me in real time because uh, it's, I can like ask you in the collective consciousness. It's really neat. It's fun, isn't it? It makes me feel so close to you guys. Like you're right here. We're just chilling. Too bad you guys couldn't hold cards. We could play some Euchre or something. That's something we only play in Michigan and Ohio. My Michigan and Ohio friends will testify to that. Euchre's a fun game. Let me tell you a good story about Euchre and my friend Jack. So, my friend Jack, him and I were friends. Um, I loved his parents, too. His parents loved me. I was kind of like part of their family. I had a lot of surrogate families. Um, but his birthday was on the 18th. September 18th. I was thinking it was the 20th for a minute. I'm like, no, it was. And my grandpa's was the 17th. My, my earth angel grandpa. <clears throat> and, um, anyways, so Jack always threw, his parents went to their cabin every weekend and Jack would throw a party at his house every birthday. Well, I'm almost every weekend really, but every birthday, like we had a party at Jack's house and Jack's parents, even if his, our birthdays were like on Wednesday, Jack's parents always left to their cabin for Jack's birthday and mine. It ended up being my birthday too. Cause you know, 18th, 19th. And Jack and I, Jack was also very intelligent actually. And he still is. Jack's still around. I just saw He's the one I just saw recently. Um, he's doing pretty good, but he's a deadhead. Um, anyways, what about, oh yeah. So this one night we're playing Euchre. That's all we ever did was play Euchre. And Jack and I were always partners because annoying Euchre partners are really annoying. I don't, if you know Euchre, if you have a bad partner, it's super annoying. So Jack and I always played together. And there's another rule in Euchre that you can always steal the deal. If nobody notices, you can steal the deal. It's legal. And this one night, Jack and I sat at the Euchre table and you'd play, you know, the winner, right? And Jack and I won every time. And um, so we never got up from the table and we literally dealt every hand that night. Every single one. No one noticed that we stole every deal over like four hours. <laughs> Oh, that was some funny shit. Well, let me tell you about JJ in Austin. Um, my Aunt Martha came down to visit me in Austin, and I knew JJ from Michigan. He's from Detroit. I met him at the club, and um, he knew how to play euchre. He was from, he, everyone from Michigan knows how to play euchre. So I, when my Aunt Martha came to visit, I invited JJ over to come play euchre with us, with Steve, and, Steve me, and Martha. And... Um, and JJ had been over many times before. He was a good friend of Steve and I. Um, that's pretty much where we met all of our friends was people that I ran into at the club that I'm just like, they're cool. You know, this is a good, this is back when I liked having friends. But, um, but anyways, JJ would stack the deck, but he didn't have it quite right. He would always be one card off. And that's how you knew he stacked the deck because when you're sitting next to JJ, you'd end up with like the perfect hand. Like, like a royal flush. Is that? That's not, um, that's not Euchre, but you know what I'm saying. If you know poker, he would just give himself the perfect hand. It's a suited game. Euchre is a suited game. It's kind of like spades, but you play with partners and, um, and there's Trump. Jacks are Trump. Left and right Bauer. The, the, and you call Trump, so it changes. You call it every time you deal. And then the highest Trump is whatever's called Trump. The highest Trump is the jack of that Trump, that 
suit. And then the same color jack of the other suit is the second highest card. And then it goes ace down. But other than that, it's basically spades with partners. But it's super fun. But you have to have four people or it's no fun at all. So I haven't played it in years, like years. Not since my grandparents died because we used to play at their house. We're going to have to play some Euchre games in the new world. All right. Tell us about um, this influence that you're showing me. Influence on the King of Wands. Who's the King of Wands? The one that's been trying to ruin your destiny. So these stories are influencing the people who tried to ruin my destiny? It's going to stop the strife. Oh, I get it. I get it. So coming out and just speaking my truth is stopping people from being able to say uh, lies about me, which is what's been going on, by the way. I don't know if I told you guys much about that. but So that's what's going on right now with these stories I'm telling. We're getting the story straight because a lot of people have been hearing a lot of things and I don't go to people and beg them to hear my story or um, believe me, like, please believe me. I don't do that. I've, I've done that a couple times and it just doesn't work. I quit that. So I just, anybody who is infected, I cut off um, because they would attack me. They'd tell me stuff like, I ruined my kids' lives and all this weird stuff. Because, oh, here's another good story for you. So two years ago, this is a doozy, guys. Not this last June, but the June before. I, um... I um was quitting drinking. I wasn't drinking. I was doing pretty good. Um, I never had a drinking problem, by the way, until um, like the past three years. It was like in the past year I haven't, but I don't know. It's just like a couple of years in there. I just um, and it wasn't a problem as I do weird, stupid stuff. It's I get in trouble. I drive cars, but anyways, um. Oh, it was the moral of the story. Oh, yeah. So, I'm sitting in my room, and my neighbor comes over. And he's got these pills, and he tells me they're uh, cocaine. And I was like... Okay, you know what I mean? I don't know. I just, I was real. I was sick and I was depressed. Okay, I was septic at this time. I told you about how I was sick all the time. And I did it. It was weird because it was out of character for me. But it, w it had fentanyl in it. And I dropped where I stood. And I, um, I puked. And I inhaled it. What is that called? In Anyways, I um, inhaled my puke, and when I woke up in the morning, I was on the floor right where I had been standing, and, you know, I had all my clothes on and everything, so that wasn't an issue, but I had puke all over me, and I couldn't breathe. So... I had my friend call the uh, ambulance and <clears throat> ended up in a coma <laughs> again. Um, I went to rehab after that because I thought like, oh my gosh, like I need some help. <laughs> I went to rehab in Waterford. It's a really nice, it's a pretty nice facility. I heard it's the best you can get, really. And Medicaid paid for it. So that was nice. And I really, I really did get a lot out of it. 
I sure did. And then I was doing really good um, until I ran into that rapper. And he was a drinker, and I started drinking with him. And then I went to get KFC with my kids and got pulled over. Well, actually, KFC, the chicken wasn't ready, so we decided to go to the convenience store. And on the way to the convenience store, I got pulled over. But my my family's been calling CPS and the police and everything like that on me for so long. Like, it was just a matter of time before something stupid happened. Four times they called CPS on me. One time was because I didn't have a furnace. My furnace broke in the flood. And Charlie called and asked for a space heater, to borrow a space heater. So they called CPS on me. CPS came and told me that um, you don't have to have a heat a furnace, um, but that they had to in do an investigation because if there's a complaint made, they have to do an investigation. And that was like two of the complaints. They were like, it's not even some... One time they said I was hoarding food in my room. Do I look like a food hoarder? So CPS had to come over here and like check my closets and shit and make sure I had food for my kids. You know, like my family sees I don't have food or I'm broke, I, I need some help. And so they'll call CPS to help me out. Um, and like my brother, one time I was, <clears throat> I left the house, it was about seven o'clock. I put the baby to sleep, my youngest Sage. I put her down to sleep and I left to go, um, to, it was to talk to somebody about a job at a place down in Detroit at a different clinic. Um, cause I was looking for a job and I was going to, I had a meeting with somebody down there and I made it at night. So I didn't have to take the kids and shit. And I had Charlie who was 14 with the baby, with the kids. And, um, and the baby, like I said, the baby was sleeping. Hey baby, this baby. And, um, can you shut that door for me? Thank you. And, um, so, my brother called, like, stopped by or something, my house, while I was gone. And <clears throat> so I wasn't home, called me, and he's like, I'm not comfortable. Huh? I don't know. Oh, you want your phone? So anyways, um... My brother called me and he's like, I'm not comfortable with the kids being here alone. And I said, honestly, you know, I'm not, you know, mind your own business is what I said. And so, um, he ended up calling the police that night and was like, they're doing wellness checks on my kids and this and that. And, you know, they never were able to find a problem, but they did eventually get me pulled over on a DUI, which is a problem. I get it. But, um... What was that about? What was I talking about? I don't know. I'll pull some cards. What else should we talk about? Spirit. All right. So we're exposing some people. Clarify uh, Ace of Justice and Burden. The sun. Oh, their plans have been stopped, um, or are being stopped, and you're about to get clarity on this. It's going to be in the news. <laughs> Maybe this is what the news, the news trucks are about. Who knows? So you're getting a message. I just stole a page of one. You're getting a message about what, spirit? <laughs> Ten of Pentacles. Generational wealth. Cha-ching! Oh, it must be the inheritance. This is also the inheritance card. So, <clears throat> possibly I'm exposing them about that inheritance fraud that they did. I know there's got to be an insurance policy, too. I don't know. That could have been. That was too thick to have been an insurance policy. 
but I'm sure because I'm like was what I was telling you about that car accident that spirit told me they had to save me from because my mom sabotaged my car. Um, there must have been an inheritance before. I mean, I was getting social security checks, but I already let her have those. Like, oh, that's another thing. You know, I wasn't living in my house and I got social security checks till I was 19 and my parents claimed me. I had to call them and tell them to quit claiming me when I was like 22. Cause I was like, I'm claiming myself. Like, are you kidding? Oh, I had to claim myself so I could go to college. And I found out they were still claiming me. <laughs> Hold, I gotta get my own like loans and stuff. Pell Grants. I can't have you. Unbelievable. But, um, you know, she took every single social security check from my dad dying, which was like $1,200 a month all the way till I was 19. And I never asked for that. I just let her have, actually, I did ask for it once. And because my friends would always bug me about it and I was staying with them. So I thought I should at least ask, you know. And um, she said she cr started crying and told me that she needed it. So I never asked again. So there's that. But I don't see why she would try to kill me over that. Like maybe it was about something with my dad's death. I know you can't get insurance when somebody kills themselves. I don't think. But maybe, I don't know what happened. I just don't know what happened there. And then there's the whole scenario, oh, like some long lost, like maybe a friend of my dad's gave me money and my mom never gave me that. And my my dad has had some very rich and famous friends. <clears throat> so that's a possibility <coughs> too. Yes? Oh yeah. She's watching my videos. <laughs> so, um... That's cute. I figure I can teach them a few things too. It's kind of nice because um, since I started the spiritual journey about like, you know, like 2019 or whatever, um, you know, I was always on it. Don't, don't, don't twist that up. I, I've always been on it since the day I was born. I wanted to be a nun because I couldn't be a priest. Okay. I wanted to be as close to God as possible, but Ever since I had a little bit of an idea of what the mission was, my it's it's kind of been all in, and my girls have really like just blossomed with that. You know, you can just tell that raising my energy and my vibration has just done the world of good for them, for my son, for everybody. Everybody in this house is happier, like much happier. Well, Sage has always been happy. <laughs> but, but, oh, that was another thing with CPS. If, if somehow I had, it, this was so weird because they asked me this question and I didn't even but, know that it, they were uh, trying mom, to catch me in something. Uh, remember, uh, my eye got a bite. Yeah, I do. It looks much better now. Because of that. But, um, now what was I talking about? Can you, I'm going to need you to watch this over there. It's too loud right here. Go sit. You can take this. Take that with you. I forget what I was talking about. It was probably important. Oh, well, it'll come to me. Can you hear that flag All right. Spirit, what else do you want to talk about? Justice. Justice. Spirit wants to talk about justice. Okay, so here's another thing. Um, I've never talked about my family to anybody. I always defended my mother. Um because she was my mother and the Bible says, honor thy mother and father. <laughs> and I was, I love God. And I was warped by the Bible. I was raised Catholic. That's a whole nother story. But I 
I don't know what I was going to say. I honored her. Nobody knew what she did to me. I never told them. I never told anyone. Nobody knows. Because I was ashamed of my mother. There. I said it. Um, so yeah, this is kind of the first time anybody's hearing about any of this. Um, if anybody who knows me is watching it, they'll be shocked. <clears throat> well, most people. Anything else, Kara? The crows are talking to me. You hear that? Holy macaroni. I think that's too much. Yeah, that's way too much. You ever been in New York City? I went there once when I was a kid. It's, um, huge. <laughs> I went to the, um, Statue of Liberty. And it really is not as big as it looks in pictures. It's kind of small. I mean, maybe that's just me, but it's kind of small. 10, 10. I'm getting um, <clears throat> 10, 10 cycle complete. You're getting your money and they're being detained. These King of Wands characters. Why is it always the King of Wands characters? I swear. I feel sorry for you, Aries, Leo, Sagittariuses, because you guys get blamed for everything. <laughs> But it is the rock star in this. Okay, let, let me backtrack. It is the rock star in this deck. <coughs> you know. So it helps me to see who they're talking about. The people that party all the time. You know, they're that's another thing. People that accuse me of being unstable. <laughs> um, my mom is an alcoholic. She goes to the bar twice a week. When she goes to the bar, she will drink 15 rum and Cokes and then drive home. Inebriated. Because she doesn't drink every day. She drinks twice a week. That's the kind of alcoholic she is. But she drinks to inebriation. And um, she has never even had a speeding ticket. <laughs> she does that twice a week. And they're calling the cops, having them follow me around, trying to get me busted for, you know, for literally having a few drinks. And I had, it only been, I hadn't even drank over like the past year before that. It was like, I was doing pretty good. I just had a few drinks, but whatever, <laughs> whatever. How did they know about that? How did they know I was drinking? I wasn't talking to them. How did they know? So there's that. They probably have cameras in my house. I've looked everywhere, but um, they know about stuff. Mm. And <clears throat> I don't lock my doors. And people can walk in my house. Um, everyone knows that. I lock them at night now because of my ex, but... Um, When I was in the hospital, my mom came into my house and told me she wanted to, this is the last time I dealt with my mom, told me she wanted to uh, clean up my house. Because there's dog hair all over my house all the time. And um, I was like, she's like, I just want you to come home to a nice clean house. You know, this is after I've been in a coma for a week and this and that, and I could barely walk it. And I was like, that'd be great. Thank you. And, um, she did come into my house. She called me in the hospital. I just gotten out of a coma wanting to know where uh, the wedding band set was from my dad and her that she'd given me. And I said, I don't know. It's in my 
jewelry box. She says, where's your jewelry box? I said, I don't know. She's like, I just want to make sure everything's safe. Um, because, you know, Charlie was here and his friends, a bunch of teenagers. And, but I didn't know where it was. And I was like, mom, you're stressing me out. You are stressing me out. And so I, she's like, well, I wouldn't want to do that. And she hung up. And then, um, when I got home though, my house was not clean except for out from under my bed. That was all cleaned out for some reason, but the rest of the house was still trashed worse than when I left, obviously, because I've been gone for two weeks and I have kids. Um, and yeah, and my jewelry box was gone. I still haven't seen that. Um, yeah. Anything else? I'm just going to pull some cards. Oh, hold on. I got to get my drink real quick. My mouth is so dry. Feels like when I was on Neurotin, that shit dries your mouth out so bad. Mm. I'm going to stop this here, guys. It's getting long. It'll take me forever to upload it. I'll get back to you soon. I love you so much. If you're listening to these stories, thanks for giving a shit. I love you. Bye.